In HTML, every element is considered a box. However, there is more to that box than just the content that the element wraps around. Let's take a quick look at a simple diagram. Besides the actual content, each box consists of padding, border, as well as margins. The box model refers to the components that make up an HTML box, as well as the rules that govern how these box components affect the layout, as well as how width and height of the box are calculated. Let's jump into the code and take a look at some examples. Okay, so here I am in Sublime Text, and I'm looking at the file called boxmodelbefore.html, and it's located in the examples lecture 19 folder. Let's quickly examine the HTML structure of this document. It's actually pretty simple. It just has one h1 here, um, has a div that has an ID box, and inside of that div there's another div with an ID content and it has some lorem ipsum, basically some dummy text in it. In addition to that, uh, I colored the box itself with a uh, background color blue and the content, which is that div right here, this content, I colored it with this color, which is basically light green. And just so we have some more interesting colors in the background, I colored the body to be gray. Okay, so here's the representation of our page in the browser. And since div is a block level element, it tries to fill in the entire parent in terms of width. So it's trying to fill up the entire width here in the browser. But there's something strange going on if you take a look. Uh, there's some space that's going on here right before lorem and here at the end of our content, the beginning end, there's spacing going on. So let's take a look at the Chrome developer tools real quick and uh, figure out what that space is about. Okay, so we'll go ahead and choose the box. That's our box. And we'll take a look as to what's going on. There doesn't seem to be any spacing that's set on the box itself. But what, how about the body itself and the body tag? Oh, and here we go. See, we realize that the body tag here has margin uh, all around of eight pixels. Now, where is that eight pixel coming from? Well, if you take a look here, it's telling you where it's coming from. It's coming from the user agent style style sheet, which means it's the browser itself. It's default. It's the default browser styles. So that's actually pretty common that the browsers do stuff like that. And what we're going to do is, in order for it not to affect what we're doing, we're going to reset it. And it actually resets on the web out there, plenty of resets on the web, how to reset default browser settings. So we'll go ahead and do margin zero, um, and we'll also do padding zero. So we won't be affected by any of that. And when we do that, when we save and refresh, you see that now uh, our content is flush with the actual borders of the browser window. Okay, so moving on, so we have our content and you can see the content is green. Now we're not seeing the background of the box the content is actually sitting in because we would have seen something blue in the background and all we see is green. And that is because the inner box, the inner content div is covering up the outer one completely because they are the same size. They both try to fill up their parent, which is in this case the body tag. They both try to fill it up all the way. And since this one basically sitting on top or inside of this one, it's covering up uh, the blue background. Let's go ahead and set some padding on our box. Let's do padding and we'll do 10 pixels top, 10 pixels right, 10 pixels bottom and 10 pixels left. Now we set that, and by the way, there's obviously a shortcut for this. You could actually remove all these 10 pixels right here, and that would mean exactly the same thing. And I'll let you actually look up as to all the different shortcuts you could take, but uh, I'll leave this here for now. So point is, it always goes top, right, bottom, left. And let's go ahead and save that and refresh the browser. And voila, now we're seeing the padding. And what the padding is doing is, is basically giving some padding around our content. And our content being this div tag right here with the, with the content text is the one that's being kind of squeezed all around uh, and the padding is showing up all around. And you, now you could see the blue because that's the background color of our box. Okay, so next let's give our box some border. Let's go ahead and say border and we'll give it a border uh, that's gonna be three pixels thick, and it's going to be solid as opposed to dashed or something like that, and there's other options here you could welcome to look up, and we wanna give it the color black. Okay, when we save that and we refresh the browser, we could see that the border showed up as well. In fact, let's make it a little bit thicker. Let's make it five pixels border, and let's make it right like that. 
Okay, and then last but not least, let's give it some margins as well. Let's give it a margin and let's go ahead and use the uh, shortcut notation, which is giving 40 pixels, which means I'm saying I want 40 pixels all around. So top, right, bottom, and left. So if I go ahead and refresh that, you could see now there's 40 pixels on every side, or you could see it on the bottom per se, and you can't really necessarily see it here, but it, there's 40 pixels on every side. Okay, well, up until now, we sort of let the content and some of our margins and so on <clears throat> dictate how big the actual box is. But what about if we actually set its width ourselves? Let's go ahead and set its width to be, let's say, 300 pixels. When we save and refresh, we see the box now became smaller. But let's go ahead and examine this box. Let's go ahead and click on it inside Chrome Developer Tools, and let's take a look. So it's showing us that our box is in fact 300 pixels wide, and since we didn't restrain our height, it go went ahead and wrapped around the text, and basically the height will adjust, unless we restrain it manually by specifying the height, it will adjust to however much it needs to fit. So if we make it a little bit smaller, let's make it, let's say, 100 pixels, and we'll refresh, you'll see the height will become a little bit bigger, the height will become 72 because now we extra, you know, we squeezed it enough that extra lines got added. So now the content width is 100, but the height is, is, is larger. So let's go ahead and put it back to 300 and refresh. And now if you look at this, um, at this breakdown, we come to our first pretty uh, interesting point. Well, first of all, let's let's go through all the components. Here, this one is the pure content right here that I'm mousing over right here. And then if I go out a little bit, it will highlight for me in the browser the padding that's going on there. And if I highlight, if I go out a little bit more, I'll go straight onto the border, right? And if you can't really see the margins, if you roll over to the margin side, voila, now you see what the margin is going on. And even though to the right side, it's showing you a little bit more than really uh, the margin is going on, but the 40 pixels all around still stands. Now, what's interesting to find out is, well, how big is this box exactly? As we're going to start putting more and more boxes, right, we're going to start making layouts of different uh, HTML components and to get our UI just right, we're going to need to find out how big is each box. Well, we sort of specified that we want the box to be 300 pixels wide. The problem is, is that it's not really 300 pixels wide. Let's take a look. If we take a look here, it says 300 pixels wide, but we're forgetting that there's a border around it or the padding around it, and the padding is 10 pixels on one side and 10 pixels on the other side, but that's not all. There's also a border around it as well that is five pixels wide and five pixels wide on this side. So really it's 300 plus 10 plus 10, that's 20, 320, plus five plus five, that's 330. So if you look at the actual visible border of this box, this box, this distance is not actually 300, this distance is 330. And the interesting part is, or kind of annoying part is that, is that depending on what border and padding you set, this width will change. So let's take a look. Let's say if I make the border something really crazy, like 20 pixels, and go ahead and refresh. Well, let's take a look. Now the border is 20 pixels, so now my box ends all the way there, right? And if I make the padding even bigger, let's say I make the padding, and this one is the right, so I make the padding 30, and on the left, I make the padding 30 as well. And I take a look at the box. Take a look how it's going to, whoa, it became bigger again. So even though we said I want the width of the box to be 300, it turns out that we're not really setting the width of the box. We're actually setting the width of the content. And that's this piece right here uh, in the green. Well, it turns out for layouts and just in general sanity, this is kind of annoying. You really want to change that. And CSS3 actually did change that. It turns out that by default, the box sizing is actually a property of every HTML element. And by default, it's actually set to content box, which means when you specify its height and width, you're specifying the height and width of the content box, not the entire thing. Well, CSS3 came out with a new value for that property, and that's called border box. Let's go ahead and set that right here. We'll say box sizing, not show sizing, and we'll say border box. And when we refresh, let's take a look. Look at that, it became smaller. So now if you take a look at the breakdown, you could see that even though we specified the width to be 300, well, that width is guaranteed to be the width of this box right here from the, begin the edge of this border to the edge of this border. 
So if you take a look here, 200 plus 30 plus 30, that's 260, plus 20 plus 20, that's another 40, that's 300. And if we change it back to content box, which is the default, it will jump back to its original size. But the truth of the matter is, all the modern frameworks like Bootstrap and others use box border box as its sizing model. And as you plan and work with your layouts, this is the same choice to make. So make sure you always stay with the box sizing of border box.